Here's one of the most instantly recognisable shapes on the road. Volkswagen's modern era Beetle. More recently introduced trendy, small, stylish little hatches may be sharper to drive, but none has quite replicated this bug's irrepressible charm. It's nicely built and golf underpinnings make it practical to own, while the curvy shape makes it feel spacious inside. In short, you can see why people like it. Now, to be quite frank, we don't have much to thank Adolf Hitler for, but the KDF Wagen, KDF means Kraft durch Freude, the old Nazi slogan, strength through joy. Uh, the people's car, first launched in 1941, certainly had something to be said for it. We know that model much better by another name, the Volkswagen Beetle. Over 22 million of them had been sold by the time in the late 90s that Volkswagen finally got round to bringing us a modern version, this car, the new Beetle. It of course shared nothing but its iconic name and curvy shape with the first generation version. And quite right too, the crude, noisy and comfortless rear-engined air-cooled original was the last thing that modern buyers were likely to want. Their idea of Beetle motoring was very different to the basic functional transport envisioned by the original's creator, Dr. Ferdinand Porsche. The new Beetle was less of a people's car and more of a people's plaything. Hatch and cabrio versions were fashion accessories you might use for a weekend jaunt or maybe a trip to the squash club. Early US buyers included Beverly Hills celebrities, a, a president's daughter and exclusive car rental establishments. This, remember, was the first chic little look at me compact car arriving a full two years before the new Mini and a full decade before the Fiat 500. Does it still have the power to please? Let's find out. Volkswagen still call this the new Beetle, but to be honest, uh, there's not much that's new under the skin. Underpinnings from a Mark IV Golf seem pretty up to the minute when this car was first launched at the turn of the century. But since then, two further Golf generations have passed this Beetle by. Not surprisingly then, uh, rivals like the Mini and the Fiat 500 offer a much more dynamic drive. But then that's never been what this car has really, uh, really been all about. Uh, yes, you can buy a 150 brake horsepower 1.8T turbo version and go relatively quickly, but you wouldn't really want to. This Beetle's just happier doodling along flower power to the fore. All of which means the potential buyers are probably better off going for a lower powered version and spending any extra budget on accessories that can be anything from desirable to dubious. So what kind of power plants are we talking about? Well, if you want an idea of where Volkswagen engine technology was about a decade ago, then this roster should help. Uh, Beetle buyers are offered a choice of a 105 brake horsepower 1.9 litre TDI diesel or a selection of petrol power plants. There's an entry level 75 brake horsepower 1.4, uh, 102 brake horsepower 1.6, a 115 brake horsepower 2 litre and a uh, 150 brake horsepower 1.8T turbo unit. Now, uh, the entry level version, the 1.4 petrol, is a bit feeble, taking about 15 seconds to get from rest to 60. But otherwise, assuming that you can't stretch to the frenetic 1.8T, the performance is pretty uniform. Rest to 60 occupying about 12 seconds on the way to a top speed of uh, around 110 miles an hour. And in this car, that's about as fast as you'd want to go. On the move, it doesn't feel anything like a Golf. In fact, to be honest, it doesn't feel anything like anything else. The curvy roof necessitates a deep front dashboard, so you feel like you're sitting miles from the windscreen. And you've got these uh, rather thick front A-pillars, so your view at junctions is a little impeded sometimes. Plus, the uh, curvy shape means that it's quite difficult to judge the car's extremities when parking. Around corners, it's uh, not surprisingly not as dynamically adept as something more modern, but to be honest, I'd have expected uh, a lot more body roll than there actually is, something that's probably aided by the Germanically firm ride. So overall, though it's certainly not a dynamically inspiring drive, at least the, uh, the slippery shape means it is an exceptionally refined one. 
Now I've opted for the hatch version here, but should you be more tempted by the stylish cabriolet, then the handling downsides aren't too great. Thanks to the inherent stiffness of the Golf Mark IV's chassis, uh, the rear view mirror in the cabriolet doesn't get an attack of the DTs when you pass over an expansion joint, nor are there the kind of creaks associated with the last moments of a Bond villain's lair when you go over speed humps. Now, uh, thanks to the way that the uh, windscreen is set back so much from the driver, uh, front seat occupants are, are well uh, protected in the soft top from uh, buffeting at speed, but uh, those sat at the back will get much more of a, a leathering from the wind. Don't buy a Volkswagen Beetle if you have a tendency towards the shy and retiring. Even now, people still stare. Yes, of course, the fashionistas have moved on to trendier models, but you can still see these zipping about town with advertising agency names on the doors or parked outside fashionable restaurants and nightclubs. The Beetle, you see, still drips with retro charm. To therefore complain about the lack of boot space, the missed opportunity for rear doors, or, or, or even the price is meaningless. If anything, the interior is even more of a shock than the outside. It's bright in here thanks to the huge glass area, and the only real issue is the way that the large windscreen uh, collects reflections from the, from the interior. But full marks to uh, the design team for creating something bespoke, for doing the job properly rather than filling this cabin with golf and polo dials from the corporate parts bin. Of course, there are plenty of telltale Volkswagen signs, the, the switches, the, uh, the firm but very supportive seating, the lovely blue instrument lighting, but you don't really notice these. What you do notice are all the natty, stylish touches, like this big central circular instrument cluster with its big numbers that illuminate in the dark, and a, a cute little built-in rev counter. You've also got a unique fit stereo, and this car's signature styling touch, the centrally mounted dashboard vase, ready for you to fill with flower power. More macho buyers can pretend it's a pen holder or something. As you'd expect from the bubble-like shape, there's enough headroom inside to wear a top hat should the mood take you. More practically, that high roof line does make travelling in the rear reasonably palatable. Access is uh, straightforward thanks to this cleverly tilting seat mechanism. And once you're back here, though legroom is at a bit of a premium, there's a lot more space than you'd have if you were in a Mini or a Fiat 500. The same applies to boot space, which varies between 209 and 769 litres in this hatch model, depending on whether you uh, fold forward the split folding rear seats. The Cabrio model wisely doesn't attempt to store its retracted hood in the boot, which is just as well, because its tiny 201 litre uh, cargo area is already pretty small. But look at me, getting all practical again. This Beetle's pleasures are far removed from the day to day. You'll like having it parked on your drive, you'll enjoy the hewn from stone-like build quality, and you'll secretly rather crave this strange compunction this car gives you to look respectable before you get in as you know people are going to stare at you. A reskinned golf it may be, but the Beetle provokes all these reactions. Remarkable. List pricing suggests that you'll be paying somewhere between 13 and 18,000 pounds for a Beetle hatch, and between 16 and a half and 22 and a half thousand pounds if you go for the Beetle Cabriolet. Indeed, Volkswagen claims that the 1.4 litre entry level Cabriolet Beetle is the cheapest four seater convertible on sale in the UK today. In terms of rivals, well, you could see yourself saving between three and four thousand pounds if you opt for a comparable Fiat 500 or a Mini, but you're looking at a rather different, uh, much smaller kind of car. Probably closer in concept is the kind of Citroen DS3 that would save you between 1,500 and 3,000 pounds over a comparable Beetle hatch. But again, that's aimed at a slightly different, perhaps sportier kind of buyer. Under the bonnet, it's well worth shaking the piggy bank to find an extra thousand pounds to graduate from the rather feeble entry level 75 brake horsepower 1.4 to the 102 brake horsepower petrol 
You may even think it worth finding an extra two and a half thousand pounds on top of that for the chuntering 1.9 litre TDI diesel with 105 brake horsepower. I'm not sure there's any point in finding even more cash for the two litre 115 brake horsepower petrol version though, as it's no faster. Unfortunately, those who want the six speed Tiptronic automatic must have that version. Uh, that only leaves this top flight 20 valve turbo, the 150 brake horsepower 1.8T, for Beetle fanciers immune to logical reason. Whichever version you choose, you should find it to be decently equipped with features like alloy wheels, um, electric mirrors, electric windows, a decent quality unique fit stereo, and uh, things like remote central locking with an alarm. Now safety wise, you get twin front and side airbags, uh, ABS, the ESP stability control program, and anti-whiplash front head restraints. With the Beatles engines hardly in their first flush of youth, you shouldn't be expecting too much in terms of economy and emissions. Best of the petrol contingent, predictably, is the 1.4, which manages 40 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 169 grams per kilometre of CO2, while the worst is the 2 litre, uh, managing 32 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 210 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now the exception here is the 1.9 TDI diesel, which is still capable of over 50 miles to the gallon in regular use, although the 143 grams per kilometre of CO2 emissions figure is nothing to write home about. Residuals for this car are very strong. You uh, should get around 40% of your original purchase price back after three years and or 36,000 miles. And there's the usual three year 60,000 mile warranty. This Beetle borrows the heritage, the silhouette, and the retro uniqueness from the original, but fuses it with the kind of fuel economy, safety, and creature comforts that modern buyers demand. You'll either love it or hate it, and that's just as it should be. Hard top or cabriolet, this remains an unashamed indulgence, both on the part of its makers and those who will buy it. Yes, the trend that this car set for high street chic has now been copied by a whole clutch of more modern designs. But you can see why loyal Beetle owners still believe the original to be the best. It certainly isn't a rational choice, but then if we did everything for rational reasons, the world would be a very dull place indeed. This car has made the automotive landscape just that little bit brighter.